This is a tutorial on using a new tool that's actually been inside Blackboard for a bit. It's called Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. Similar to any other type of screencasting or video conferencing tool like WebEx or Google Hangout, this tool is built into Blackboard. I'm going to give you a brief overview. This is the Blackboard welcome page. All faculty who are assigned a course officially on Banner will have their course already preloaded into Blackboard. The preloaded course will have the roster of the students who are officially enrolled. You'll locate it under the My Courses module. Let's click inside the course to get to Blackboard Collaborate. Blackboard Collaborate Ultra will be listed on the course menu as BB Collaborate. Once you've clicked on the Blackboard Collaborate link on the course, you'll be brought to the Blackboard Collaborate Ultra screen. The perspective I'm sharing is a course instructor. At this stage, you have two different places to create a session and one place to join the room. Let me focus on creating a session. To create a session, click on Create Session button. A new panel will open along the right side of your screen where you can edit three settings, Title, Event Detail, and Session Settings. Title. Enter the title you want for the session. After entering the session title, the guest access options will appear. Here you can set up guest access for the session. Check the checkbox to enable guest access. There's different ways you can give participants access. For instance, if you wanted to use this with your class but had a guest speaker or someone that is not part of Fordham and not inside your Blackboard course shell, this link here you can copy and grab and you can send the link to that person in an email. This link would permit your guests to be able to join into your Collaborate session. Further options in the Edit Settings area are to determine what role the guest should have. The guest role is listed as participant. That means anybody who's coming in as a guest with this guest link is going to default to the participation view. The drop-down menu to select the default role for guests, the role that an individual will have when they enter your session. There are participant, moderators, and presenter roles. Next are the event detail settings. You may select a start and end date and a time for the session. If you would like to create a session that is open 24 seven or for the entire semester, check the box for no end, open session. In other cases, you may want to schedule repeat sessions. Selecting repeat sessions lets you create multiple weekly sessions at once rather than creating them each individually. I'm going to just leave everything else alone and I'm just setting the start and end date. This will usually be the same date and with this time duration basically defaulted to an hour. If that's not something you wanted, you can adjust the start time and end time. You can adjust whether or not you want anybody to get into your session early or not and then how early they can actually get into the session. Optionally, you may enter a description for your session and that will appear in Blackboard for your students. Now, here, if you believe that you want to record your session, and this can be any time during your live session, or maybe you have no intention of recording it, but at some point, if you think you want to record the session, and you're going to want to check this box. This gives you the flexibility to ad hoc record your sessions. I always leave mine on allow recording downloads, even if it's not something I'd regularly do. But for instance, if you actually recorded your session, it would be stuck in that particular course without the selection chosen. With this option chosen, Blackboard Collaborate Ultra allows you to download the recorded session and then you can do whatever you want with it. You can download it to your computer, you can put it in Google Drive, you can actually put it in your YouTube account and then get the embed code and do anything that you needed to in order to post it on a blog or a website, what have you. So this is one of the first things I make sure I check. I allow recorded downloads. The next option you'll see is anonymizing chat messages. This only occurs to the recorded session, but if you care to anonymize student names in the chat box area, check this box, anonymize chat messages under the recording session. This option is recommended for FERPA compliance, especially if you're sharing recordings outside of the classroom or reusing recordings from previous semesters. The other settings are default, and I generally don't change these settings. Once all options have been set, 
Click the Save button at the bottom of the panel. OK, so I'm going to click right here in the session we've created. I'm joining the session right now, so this is what the screen looks like. This is our welcome screen once we've joined a session. There are three menus I will go over. The first menu is on the left. Click the menu icon to have it slide out. Here you can select to record your session. The next option, if you do not have a webcam or a microphone to participate in the session, you can use the dial-in number and unique PIN. Each participant will have a different PIN code, and will find it here. If you are using a webcam and microphone, you do not need to use this phone option, although it's available if you need to access it. The next menu is on the right-hand side of the screen. Click this icon to have it slide out. The settings gear is a good place to start. Here, you can click to set up your microphone and webcam if you have one. Before I go into other options, I want to refocus on the last menu area in the center of the window. This is where you can toggle your video camera and microphone on and off. Other options here can enhance your participant's participation. If you have a large number of participants joining your session, you may ask them to disable their microphone until you designate them or a specific participant to toggle it back on. If a participant wants to get your attention or raise their hand, they can from this menu area. You may also see other mood indicators that may be helpful to set your pace. This helps you get the temperature of the participants who are in the session. Going back to the right hand menu, I'll highlight the other tabs. This is the chat window where participants can type comments or ask questions and communicate via text format. The next panel shows all the participants in the session. This is where you'll see their status, if they raise their hand or if their connection is weak and unstable. Anyone whose bandwidth is low will display as red. So it's a good indicator to know if they need to disable their video connection to save resources or call into the session via telephone. The last and most important tab is the share icon. Here you can share a whiteboard, presentation files, or your screen and application. You can share presentation files such as PowerPoint or PDF files directly in Collaborate or share the application. But how do you know which to use? Let me help you decide. For the best overall experience, use shared files. This option is best. However, if you have animations in your presentation, or if you're presenting live in a physical space like a classroom and online simultaneously at the same time, use share application. Let's take a look at each option. First, I'm going to show you the shared files method. Please note you can upload presentations of 60 megabytes or less. After uploading, you can click Share Now. The slide navigation panel previews all your slides. Select the slide to start sharing it. When you use the Share Files method to share your PowerPoint slides, each slide is optimized so your attendees can view the quality slides no matter their network connectivity. Additionally, you can upload more than one presentation at a time to have at the ready during your session. Uploaded files stay in your session until deleted by the moderator or instructor. This makes it easier for you to return to slides if you need to review them again. And finally, when you upload your presentation, you can use the Collaborate annotation tools with your slides. The next option I'll walk you through is the share application method. First, you want to set up your presentation before you choose to select share application. For the best experience, don't use normal or full screen views for your presentations. These views can make it challenging for you and your attendees to see everything. Instead, share your slides in a resizable window. To do that, in PowerPoint, open your slideshow menu and select Setup Show. Select the Browse by Individual window and select OK. When you start your presentation, you can resize the presentation window to the size you want. Now you're ready to share your slides and collaborate.
Other helpful tips to collaborate are to run polls or have breakout groups to facilitate group work or collaboration. You can separate your participants into smaller groups. This will filter them into their own session to work amongst themselves. Or have breakout groups. To facilitate group work or collaboration, you can separate your participants into small groups. This will filter them into their own sessions to work amongst themselves. The moderator or instructor can toggle into each group session to supervise or participate with the group privately. Then after a set time, the moderator or instructor can end the group session and everyone is brought back to the full session. Remember, if you have recorded the session, toggle back to the left-hand menu to stop recording. Then click to leave the session to close out of the session. To find your recordings after the session, click on this menu icon and select Recordings. Your recordings will be listed here. This was a brief highlight of the options you have to conduct a successful Blackboard Collaborate session.